My name is Dr. J. K. A. Jameel. I am a senior consultant in the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology and Minimal Access Surgery at Apollo Hospitals in Greens Road in Chennai. Today I am going to be sharing with you some information about gallstones. Gallbladder is a small pear-shaped organ located in the undersurface of the liver. Its function is storage of bile. Bile, which is a digestive juice, is secreted from the liver and it empties into the gut. But before it actually empties into the gut, it gets stored in the gallbladder for a little while. Uh, and this gallbladder ejects out bile into the gut periodically throughout the day. It happens usually after a heavy meal. Now, bile is a liquid and uh, there are uh, many ingredients within it. The three most important ingredients are cholesterol, bile salts and bile pigments. The cholesterol and the bile salts have to be present in the bile in a specific ratio. If this ratio is altered or if there is an increased amount of bile pigments in the bile, which can happen in certain diseases, the bile tends to crystallize a bit, it tends to sediment a bit. And uh, over a period of time, these sediments can uh, aggregate and cause stones, and this is what we call as gall stones. Uh, these stones can happen anywhere in the biliary system, but uh, they occur most often in the gallbladder because that's where uh, the bile is uh, most stagnant. The most common symptom of stones in the gallbladder is abdominal pain and this pain usually occurs in the upper abdomen, uh, on the right side, underneath the, the ribs and it can go to the back, uh, sometimes to the right shoulder blades. Um, this pain can occur anytime during the day, uh, but typically uh, it occurs after a heavy meal or a fatty meal. Um, sometimes patients can have constant pain associated with fever and vomiting. Now these are all some of the problems that stones uh, cause when they are inside the gallbladder. Uh, sometimes the stones in the gallbladder can slip out of the gallbladder and enter the bile duct too. And uh, when they enter, when they get into the bile duct, they can cause uh, different kinds of uh, problems. Uh, for example, if they get into the bile duct and if they uh, block the bile duct, the patients can have jaundice. Uh, we call it as obstructive jaundice because basically the jaundice is because of obstruction of bile. Uh, the bile doesn't flow out freely into the gut. Um, the other problem that might occur when the stones slip into the bile duct is what we call as pancreatitis. Uh, the bile duct, just before it enters the gut is joined by another duct called pancreatic duct which basically brings the pancreatic juice um, into the into the gut uh, if the stone gets stuck at that junction in addition to patients developing problems with jaundice they could also develop a condition called pancreatitis which is basically um, inflammation of the pancreas because of obstruction of the pancreatic duct. It's a very, uh, very painful condition. Uh, it can be quite serious and sometimes patients can end up in intensive care unit with pancreatitis and it can be a life-threatening condition too. An ultrasound scan is all that is required to diagnose gallstones. It's a simple test, widely available, it's relatively inexpensive and uh, doesn't involve any radiation to the human body. Uh, occasionally, uh, your clinician might want you to have uh, another test which is called an MRCP which stands for Magnetic Resonance Cholangiopancreaticogram. Uh, this is something that might be required if there are problems in the liver function tests or if the ultrasound has got any particular uh, feature that might suggest a stone in the 
biliary system treatment for uh, symptomatic gall stones depends on whether the stones are present just in the gall bladder or whether they are present in the gall bladder and in the uh, tubes that drain the bile out of the liver which are the hepatic ducts and the bile duct uh, if it is present only in the gall bladder the treatment is a laparoscopic cholecystectomy which is basically a keyhole operation to remove the gall bladder but if they are present both in the gall bladder and in the duct the treatment is usually a two step approach a two step treatment uh, the first step is an endoscopic procedure called ERCP where a tube is passed down the gullet all the way down to the stomach and to the first part of the small intestine called duodenum the bile duct is accessed the stones are retrieved the blockage is cleared so that's the first first step once that is successfully done the patient goes on to have the second step which is the uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy occasionally surgeons might want to do the bile duct clearance and the uh, removal of the gall bladder both at the same time in a single surgical procedure Although these are treatment modalities for symptomatic gallstones, there is a group of patients, a significant number of patients who have stones in the gallbladder but don't have any symptoms whatsoever. There is a role for leaving them alone. However, it's important that these patients are informed about the potential problems, potential symptoms that these stones could cause in future and it's quite important that these patients are aware of them and they seek medical attention if and when the symptoms arise a laparoscopic cholecystectomy is a keyhole operation to remove the gallbladder it's a it's an operation that is done under general anesthetic and uh, four holes are made in the upper part of the abdomen through which laparoscopic instruments are inserted and the gallbladder is removed uh, if this operation is done in a planned fashion and we call this as an elective laparoscopic cholecystectomy patients can be discharged on the same day or the morning after uh, surgery basically they can be done as either day cases or uh, or just on a 24 hour or a 36 hour stay in the hospital uh, but if the same operation is done in an emergency setting they may have to stay in the hospital a little longer uh, it's a relatively safe operation uh, and it's widely performed however there are some risks uh, just like how uh, uh, there are risks with any operation this operation also comes with risks there are some general risks like bleeding and infection and and um, risks related to the anesthetic but specific to this operation there is a risk which uh, we call as injury to the bile duct uh, thankfully with uh, increasing expertise and uh, advancement in technology um, these risks are extremely low and most of the time patients simply sail through the operation after a laparoscopic cholecystectomy the recovery is uh, usually quite good patients are expected to get out of their beds and uh, start walking in about uh, 4 to 6 hours time um, there is no specific dietary restriction after this operation they can basically start eating and drinking as normal from the next day onwards the pain that they experience is uh, is minimal and most of the time uh, this is well controlled with just a few tablets of paracetamol over the next few days um, the holes that we uh, perform the holes that we make to perform this operation are all closed with absorbable uh, sutures and these sutures uh, dissolve away uh, very well in a, in a few weeks time and therefore there's no hassle of having to go to a doctor or a nurse for a suture removal or anything of that of that kind um, the scar that uh, the patient eventually gets uh, is, uh, is hardly visible uh, after a few months uh, sometimes when patients come back to the doctor after several years and if the doctor happened to ask the patient you know could you please point out exactly where those holes are the patients 
um, find it hard even to locate, to precisely locate where exactly uh, they are. Such is the, um, uh, such is the level uh, of, uh, of healing that usually happens. The scars completely fade away and the patients have completely forgotten that they have actually had an operation.